What's going on? Back to the again with your boy the Prophet. Hey yo, man. So today we got a great video for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the discussion, this topic, this conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it with no delay, man. The best tech characters in the game. I know y'all want to talk about the rankings and who's best and who got moved up and down, man. We about to get it popping. I hope you guys do the content. Let's get it lit. Drop my shit. Back plugged in again. All right, so let's do it. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the Bankai Biakia. This whole row D uh, tier right here. None of these characters have frenzy or flurry. Keep that in mind. Out of these characters, Biakia should be clearing content the fastest. He does have 40 Berserker, 30 Bruiser, and he does have full stamina damage of 20%. So that goes towards his normal attack, strong attacks, and his soul bomb. He does have bombardment with weakened defense. So his soul bomb is basically gonna have like 50% extra magnification when he has full stamina. So he has a really good kit too. Um, 870 beam, he has a 1200 radius full screen third strong attack and his uh, second of course is a shield or a barrier move so if he gets resurrected and gets frenzy with the recharge link it'll be massive it'll be massive he'll go from like d or c tier to like s or ss tier it'll be crazy i would love to see it for the biaki okay I'm gonna go and talk about the shinji here one of the trolliest units out i'm not going to go into great detail about these first few rows just to save a little bit of time if i can for you guys but 80 bruiser he has a 30 percent low stamina damage link he came out right right before characters with pve killers were getting flurry his damage output is just going to be lackluster pretty much compared to anybody you just don't really want to use a character without frenzy or flurry Moving on to Kensei, um, he does have double immunity, same as the Shinji. Um, he does only have a 50 Berserker, or a 50 Bruiser, excuse me, with a 20 DR link. So, yeah, pretty much nothing to say, 20 DR link. This Yachiru, double immunity is on her. She's ranged with an Iran card killer. Um, yeah, so, so her clear time is going to be really bad. She's constantly going to be running into guard. And that's ultimately not what you want. Even though she has two status immunities, it doesn't really help her auto faster. It just means she'll be a bit safer in certain situations. Moving on to this Omari, pretty much as bad as it can get as far as the kit. The only reason he's above Biaki is because he does have Frenzy. And on top of that, he does have Long Stride. So you can at least use him as a taxi. Like, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, range collision first. His second is a range collision, melee collision split, similar to Can't Fear and War Bodagon. His third is a 900 radius around him, so not even full screen. No affiliation killer, like I said, long try with the recharge link. This Kisuke, I just wish he would be higher, but he has one of the worst first and second strong attack combinations in the game. His first is literally one of the worst in the game, range collision, and the magnifications are split into three. So low damage possibility is just very, very high that you're not going to get a lot of damage whatsoever from his first or second. The second hits in a wave, hits in three waves essentially. It's the same type of AoE as like a barrier move, except he can't just kill right off with it because he has to go, ch -ch -ch -ch. he has to like literally swing for the full duration of the strong attack to get that full damage and that's going to hold him back quite significantly other than that he has a recharge link with the hollow killer and a revive mechanic on his soul bomb and a nice full screen third and a very very nice night stream this Orihime does have human killer as well as this my yuri they're like they both have a floor in senkai mode where you can use either one or just any really good tech character but um yeah so human killer recharge link lunging first her second is pretty much similar to this Kisuke where it's a, a 550 AOE around her and it hits in like two or three waves. 
so the damage is segmented. A full screen third, she does have an insta kill chance on her soul bomb, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. My Yuri, he does have a boost, uh, an infinite boost mechanic if you want to stack recharge on him. Um, that's literally all he's going to do. And I mean, he could be lower, but I mean, it's kind of hard to be lower if you do have Frenzy, but he has Human Killer, which is pretty much null and void except in one space in St. Kaimon. He had the same kind of first strong attack as his Kisuke, except he's ranged, so he's going to be way further out when he's using it. Very, very bad. This Yumi Chica pretty much has a, a similar kit to Ode, pretty much a mix between Orihime and Kisuke's kit. He has the lunging first, his second is like the split collision like Kisuke. And then, um, yeah, I mean, his, his kit's just bad. Um, Hollow Killer, and he has a last dish survival link. Pretty much it. I'm gonna move on next to Kugo Ginjo. You know, his first is a range collision with decent magnifications. His second is a distant AOE, like 575 or 550 to 575, somewhere between there. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's solid, you know, for OG strong attack. I mean, it is solid. They're definitely a worse strong attack back in the day. His third is a charge strong attack um, that's just straight around him, so it's not distant or anything. I think that hurts him as well. On top of that, he has a strong attack damage link, not a strong attack recharge link. What's an Iran car killer? He does have weakened defense, if I'm not mistaken, though. Then we're going to move on to this Halloween Gein, who he has pretty much a similar kit to this Yumi Chica, where he has a lunging first. His second is a, the three split collision um, attack for a second strong attack, and then a full screen third. He does have a, an extra flash step and poison on everything with the recharge link this shouldn't we range collision first moving vortex second full screen third so him and this this red two have the exact same kit i don't know man i i would say maybe red two's first is slightly better but so they both pretty much have the exact same stats and skills exact same kit so however you want to slice it between these two you're good to go with me all right but yeah, we just cover both them in one blow. <laughs> All right, moving on to Tensai. He has a lunging first strong attack. He has a boom, bam, pow, distant 525 to 575 AOE in front of him. So it's a solid second strong attack as well as a full screen third, which he lunges, right? So he has a lunging full screen third. That's just pretty dope. They don't really do that at all. He does have a bruiser, but no berserker, of course. Yeah, man, Tins is a very slip on unit. Of course, he's not going to compete with this day and age. But, you know, maybe when he gets resurrected, he has a very high chance to, to make some waves, to be honest with you guys. This Demon Society Grimjow, he has a solid kit. Lunging first, strong attack. His second is a two wave, 625 to 650. AoE around him, uh, somewhere between that range. It hits in two phases, similar to like Christmas Nellio. That's who it's similar to. A lot of people have that kind of same second strong tech. You know, hits in two waves, blah, blah, blah you know, uh, sucks him in, then blows up. Hey man, that's what she said. Um, he does have no affiliation killer in the strong attack damage link, which that does hold him back slightly. I love his aesthetic. I love his strong attacks. Uh, I think his lunge is really cool, and I think it gets a little bit more distant than your average lunge. Um, don't exactly quote me on that, but it just feels really good, really solid, really fast. I like his third as well. I like his whole kit, but no affiliation killer and um, strong attack damage link definitely slow him down. Now, this uh, Biakia. He does have weakened defense as well as Lisa, Lacerate slash burn on pretty much everything with Havoc. He's a solid unit. He's definitely a solid unit. He does have Havoc, like I said, lunging first. His second is a 20 hit vortex. So it's not the super elongated vortex, but it's still worse than like pretty much any other move that doesn't damage right off. So like I said, weakened defense is incredibly broken though in a lot of game modes. So just keep that in mind is that, you know, his soul bomb's going to hit like a truck on top of him having burn as well. And then we're going to move on to Lisa. Lisa's second strong attack is just deplorable. Like the range is really bad, like 350 AOE. 
really, really bad. The projectile spreads really awkward. It, it doesn't really allow you to hit multiple, multiple charges of it with people. So it really just lends itself to honestly do less damage than her first strong attack. And that's in very weird cases, but in her case, her second does less damage than her first. We're gonna move on to Tesla. Lunging first, barrier move second, full screen third, sorry per killer, strong attack damage link. Pretty much all you can say about him. And this Dark Rukia who like, she gets a pretty bad rap to be quite honest with you. It's, I would say more or less because her first strong attack, it's a lunge, but it's like segmented. It like kind of hits in two, maybe three waves. Just feels kind of weird. You don't really get max damage potential in, unless you literally land the full lunge. And that kind of defeats its purpose, makes it feel more like a range collision lunge, which isn't technically a thing. Lunging first, and she has a 725 beam second with a charge third with weakening on everything and sorry per killer. She could really be higher, like to be quite frank with you. She, sh she should really be, she should honestly, with the lunging first, a beam second, and a charge attack third, she should literally either be like, probably right, probably right here, yeah, because, because her soul bomb is going to hit like crazy, to be honest. But how her kit plays out, it, it really is not smooth. So I don't know, man. You guys let me know how you feel about her. On top of that, no one's going to have any dupes of her unless you're just crazy. I don't know. It just really slows her play style down. I would say her first is the biggest flaw on her. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next tier, which is going to be our auto slash epic raid slash gq which is going to be guild quest and essentially that means guild quest support you know what i mean so these characters are going to be good as autoers meaning you can set them up with minimal gear and auto you know dr links or nad links whatever you have that's the best last ditch links whatever you can put on them you know that's going to help them survive long enough they should be able to beat the quest if you have good or bad gear on them so that's why they're auto characters and if they're epic raid bonuses they're very good and if these characters have killer and guild quests they'll be very very great support characters okay so we're going to go ahead and move on starting with kukaku shiba one of the, she's one of those characters that she's a nad character but she has almost a perfect kit she has she basically has the same exact kit as ginzuru lunging first 800 rated second and a full screen third like the same kit so you know unfortunately she does not have frenzy of course and you know and she don't have guard break either i'm like ginzuru but um yeah man she's a really good character honestly like i said her, her kit kind of makes some people cry burn on everything like i said a wrong car killer but um yeah, man, overall, she's a very, very great character. And, uh, you know, she just kind of falls victim to that bunch of characters that have flurry but no guard break. Go ahead and go ahead and move on to the Pot Kenpachi or the Can't Fair and World Kenpachi or Shika Kenpachi, however you'd like to call him. He has an interesting kit, a beam first, which is not really good for autoers. And then his second is a vortex, which is a planting vortex. It starts as a full screen. The thing that really makes him intangible is that that plus five potion link skill in IZ. So, you know, that's going to basically set you up so that you, if you have this character, you can get speed potions significantly faster. All right. So that's essentially what makes him special. You know, he does have flurry plus bruiser. So that's gonna be good. A decent berserker on him as well. All in all, his kit is okay, but you know, there are a little a couple differences. But overall, the potion link slot skill on Kenny really, really edges him up. And if you have him on your account, I would say overall in this list, just because of that skill, he's gonna be the best in this tier just to have him for your account. But performance wise, I would say that it, it will probably be like this. We're gonna go ahead and leave it like that. We're gonna move on to Hiyori. Like I said, weak in defense. So she's basically the best epic raid bonus on this list, if you ask me. She has a PvE killer with the Nad Link. You know, she has poise as well, flurry and a PvE killer. And uh, her vortex isn't really the best for epic raids but the same is that it groups enemies for guild quests helps you just destroy yeah it'll help break guards in pve if she just auto in okay we're gonna go ahead and move on to the homeboy asking that one of the swaggiest characters in bbs without a doubt 
um, beam first strong attack and then second is a debuff move which only works on one wave of enemies then his third is a full screen he does have a pvp killer so keep that in mind he is not gonna pretty much ever have killer in epic raids ever anywhere um except pvp really so keep that in mind but uh, overall yeah debuff skill makes him pretty solid overall and a good autoer um yamamoto i would pretty much say between the two yamamoto could be a little bit over him but the debuff skill just makes him that much better especially against bosses and stuff but yeah like i said most of these are pvp characters i'm actually not going to spend too much time talking about them because everything is pretty much copy and paste captain killer and flurry and all that kind of stuff so yeah dr unit set him up to auto great in pvp this Ichigo, as well as as far as PvE content, he's a really good unit for a spotter killer gil quest. But other than that, his killer kind of limits him. Now, he does have flurry, so he doesn't really need killer. He just whacks stuff. But his first strong attack really pushes enemies back. But his second groups him up. And his third pops off pretty fast. He has Nad String is perfectly perfect. This Ichigo should really see himself above. He could really see himself higher, but his Nad String is so bad. His damage is basically broken up into four hits, which drastically slows him down. It's it's just bad. A round card killer, he's a healer, so he can't break guard with the second strong attack very not ideal situation for any character that's ranged and has to rely heavily on normal attack if you cannot break guard with every single strong attack you have you are going to suffer with your clear time even though he's a he's a medic but you don't really need healing a lot especially not in epic raids because a lot of times people run low stamina damage and if you have a healer it kind of just makes stuff weird but yeah all right so now we're really getting into the thick of it we are in our s tier and these are some really really great units overall we're gonna go ahead and talk about them make sure if you guys are enjoying the video you make sure you smack that like button and make sure you stay tuned and stay plugged in to your boy for the genshin impact videos I, i'm covering genshin impact like crazy i actually have a genshin impact tier list that'll be premiering in a few hours so yeah make sure you guys stay tuned if you're excited for that all right, now we're going to go ahead and move on to this Aizen. Basically, one of the best lunges in the entire game. His first strong attack is 750 radius. Lunging strong attack with crazy back and side range. Super fast distance. I mean, it's just really insane. You know, they've never given this strong attack to any other character since this Aizen. Which, you know, you kind of you kind of want them to start bringing it back more. Because it's almost, it's almost twice as better twice as good as your standard lunge i mean almost in every way so yeah the only thing that holds him back really i mean i would truly say he would be s plus character if his second wasn't a boost move so you have to get not only right on top of the enemies to do damage which ah, man and the cooldown is so long 20 seconds he does have a 40 bruiser which is incredible for back in his time um frenzy of course so recharge link soul reaper killer uh chance to enter kill on his soul bomb his first is really his first carries him absolutely carries him and i'm actually waiting for the day that they make his first strong attack on another character as a first strong attack but yeah so for bring ichigo you could make a case that he should be over aizen especially since after he got resurrected and actually i'm kind of conflicted to be honest but i would oh, man, it, it's really really conflicting i i'm 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 sorry i i i feel like this is the correct order for bring ichigo basically has 40 bruiser berserker and a perfect kit of course aizen's first is definitely better than his but ichigo's second is way way better than aizen's not only in aoe but in cooldown time so i'm gonna go ahead and go with ichigo over top and uh, i would say that's a really really huge leap because before ichigo just had strong attack damage and there is no way he was the same level as aizen who can spam that crazy first strong attack so i'll say overall yes this ichigo is better than aizen overall now ichigo lunging first strong attack 
725 beam second strong attack and a full screen third this character literally 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 changed how strong attacks are played he changed the meta of this entire game and you always got to pay homage to this character because he had the original god kit all right now we're going to go ahead and move on to the tag team toshiro two of the best killers in the game a Ron Car killer and sorry Reaper killer his slight drawback is that he has a strong attack damage link so um, he's not going to be able to spam his strong attacks as frequently but he does have a standard lunge 475 his second strong attack however is actually unique to only him and technically mind shinji mind shinji has his exact same second strong attack except a 20 percent more aoe so yeah so this is a basically a 900 radius you know 900 width beam with 2500 length so it's an upgraded second strong attack of this ichigo right here but they have never given this strong attack out to any character after him however this is a very god tier second strong attack and his first strong attack is basically perfect you know without havoc and his third is um it's a, a two-phase hitting attack full screen for sure sucks the enemies up and then explodes I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the Spear Society Kyan. Lunging first, strong attack, and he has a charge strong attack for third. So it's 1080 radius, meaning it's larger than full screen with twice the damage, all right? The only thing he is held back by is his second strong attack is a range collision move, which lends itself to be a boss killing move. You have to get right up on the enemy and discharge that thing like a freaking Pikachu Thunderbolt, all right? And um, yeah, it'll do massive amounts of damage, but it's not ideal for killing mobs. And that's what you're gonna be doing 90% of the time. This guy is really a, a high DPS specialist. At a point, he was technically considered the highest DPS character in certain burst uh, aspects of the game because he has a full screen charge attack third and a second strong attack that can just rack up high high damage and he does have havoc so it really helps him out moving on to the sun sun beam first strong attack it's very it's pretty much the same thing as this toshiro uh fifth anniversary biakia except she does not have havoc so she has a 725 beam first which literally carries her that if she did not have that 725 beam nini would be over her and uh there may be a little bit of debate on where nini's place is too but we'll get to that in just a moment so her her second strong attack holds her back slightly because it is ranged collision however it has 100 percent magnification so that means that if her second strong attack if the projectile hits you twice you're technically taking more damage than your average second strong attack but it is still range collision meaning once that projectile passes you it cannot damage or affect anything in front or behind it so that really kind of holds her back a hollow killer with 12 recharge like nini spangle kind of some debate is out for her to be honest because she could easily be right here it could easily be a little bit lower but the reason that i would say overall she's right here she's good in her place she has a significantly better first strong attack than udu and aizen and i know that sounds weird because it's all range collision but you can check she has abnormally high magnifications on her first same as like sun sun does on her second strong attack and you know i, I don't know like the range on her first it i don't know man it, it kills really really effectively i will say that now i will say she has the same strong attack as udu and aizen except udu can just spam the strong attack and he has guard break and he has all status resistance but nini has 100 percent range resistance which means she can legitimately solo extreme co-op and that is very very important she's the only character that's tech with that ranged or melee nullify resist so that does make her a very high key component in extreme co-op and you will 100 percent see her in pretty much every tech extreme co-op until the game is over or until they get another character that has that ability to bypass uh, guard, be it range or melee. Like I said, she does have Havoc with very, very high Berserkers and all that good stuff, but her kit does slow her down. The fact that her second can only be used every 20 seconds, it's a massive, massive shot in her clear time. Overall, I would say she is above Udiu. But in some cases, Udi was going to be better. I, I would say it's very close between these two. 
make sure you let me know how you weigh in. I, I kind of have her here because she has that resist uh, range skill, but he does have guard break and um, status resistance. So let me know how you feel about that. Uryu, his first strong attack is massively... I mean, this thing pushes enemies back super far. It makes it very hard to group enemies. Um, but, you know, he does have 40 Bruiser Berserker and Guard Break. So, at least he's not going to have to consistently stop and wait and just wait for Guard to be broken. He's going to be waiting because he's going to be knocking enemies back over to the Asia server or back to the time when JP server was a month ahead. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, his first is just has major pushback. Like I said, same second strong attack as Nini, where it's a suction and then a projectile, which is range collision at the end. 1200 radius, full screen third, and his, I have to say, unique ability to reverse off status ailments makes him a really, really clean autoer, even though his clear time will be very slow. All right, we're gonna move on to this Aizen. Honestly, man, like I said, he could see himself higher, you know, um, I could see maybe being, I could see this essentially because he had the same kind of kit as Nini, except he has guard break. They both have 40 Bruiser Berserker, but um, his, her first is better. I mean, it, it really is. Her first is better, you know, and he still had the same cooldown, but he has a transformation mechanic and guard break. So like I said, you could literally make the case that Nini should be about right here. Make sure you guys win and let me know. I'll, I'll be eager to see where you guys think she, she fits. Do you think she should be in the back of S tier or hell, even in A tier? Because a lot of these characters have better kits than her. It's just her overall utility. All right. Now, listen. Listen, y'all. Now it's getting thick. But, yeah, this Yamamoto is absolutely broken. The only reason that people give him shit is because of his killer. If he did not have no affiliation killer, he wouldn't... He, he, he would be a god tier unit. He has a lunging first strong attack, a unique second strong attack, which is 870 AOE and a lunge. So it's literally better than the best second strong attack in the game without Havoc. Granted, I would say this is slightly under. I would say a 960 second strong attack is, let's say, an 11 out of 10. I would say this is a 9.5 out of 10. Yamamoto second strong attack. So definitely one of the best second strong attacks possible. Yeah, man, this Yamamoto is absolutely broken. He has the innate skill, which lets him burn. I, how I saw it, he was burning one of three enemies every five seconds. Yes, it's RNG. Um, I don't know the exact probability of the burn, how high or low it is, but literally every five seconds, there was an enemy whether they were close or way off in the back of the screen was getting burnt, which allows him to get that 20% extra damage. So he had 20 Bruiser Berserker, 20% damage to burning enemies, debilitator of two seconds because he has burn, of course, Devastation 40, which pretty much every single character on this list has Devastation 40, um, Havoc, and plus Sprinter. He has the innate ability to be able to hit enemies that have dodge skill, which is just a caveat ability that they added for this new quest, I will definitely say. Then he also has the innate ability to give him fire resistance. This man has 11 skills. That's a big deal. So he's definitely more powerful, dude. Like, the cap is eight skills. He has 11 because he has three innate skills. Everything he has fits in his kit perfectly. The fact that he can damage just any enemy on the screen with never having to use a strong attack, which is going to get him 20% extra damage to, like I said, about one of three enemies every five seconds. I mean, you know, he's pretty much never going to have a killer except for in Guild Quest and except for that new game mode. Sometimes no affiliation killers do come around and tech might be one of the options you know but um overall man his killer does slow him down but i'm not going to cap i'm going to always make the fair and most just list possible and with all the stat skills data that i have in front of me this yamamoto is the best technique character in the game we're gonna go ahead and move on to Ginzuru. Lunging first strong attack, 800 radius second strong attack, full screen third. He's, he can switch between lacerate and poison. So yeah, like I said, super killer and hollow killer, recharge link, guard break, um, 20 bruiser berserker, and he has a dual mechanic which does keep him protected, makes him auto very, very, 
very smoothly and very efficiently because the duo unit keeps him safe and he has guard break so a lot of people feel like Ginzu should be above Yamamoto because he has two killers and they are both better killers than Yamamoto has on top of having guard break however Ginzu does not have havoc and at the end of the day more AoE means faster clear time so if you can kill more enemies with your strong attacks then you're going to kill stuff faster I'm going to tell you guys Yamamoto has a better first second and third strong attack than Ginzu so at that margin, there's really no comparing. I mean, Ginzuru is going to get more damage against Soul, Reaper, uh, Soul Reapers and Hollows, and that's going to be really good for sure, definitively. You know, in most cases, Ginzuru should be hitting for more damage than Yamamoto because Yamamoto 20% is behind RNG and there's not as much no affiliation content in the game. I will, however, say if this was any other color in the game, nor Ginzuru nor Yamamoto would be the best at their color. They, they, like tech is literally the weakest attribute overall for sp characters so i'm just calling it how i call it you guys you know i do feel like overall yamamoto is going to be better than ginzuru because his kit is better at every single turn and angle We're going to go ahead and move on to tla soy phone who is the fastest unit in the game still as far as base clear time i mean no one clears faster than this character like I mean, if you put everybody at one of five, I mean, if she has killer, she's going to clear faster than pretty much anybody, let alone if you have dupes in her, there is no one clearing faster than her. Now, I will say clear time is not every single thing. It's not always about min maxing for the fastest speed time, but that's one of the greatest things attributes one of the greatest things in this game if you can kill stuff fast you're going to clear faster so if you have a combination of moving four times faster than everyone and a great kit you know mixed in with 14 recharge you're going to be a very long lasting unit and the fact that they haven't given long stride out to only but a few units since she's really only three units since she's come out so just makes her age better i'm gonna go ahead and move on to can't fear and worse stark beam first strong attack eight nine sixty second strong attack stark uh, he does have a different slightly different beam first strong attack it's uh originally a 690 beam it's not the 725 so it's slightly less range slightly less width but um still a perfect beam melee collision Perfect second strong attack, 960, still the best in the game aside from 5th anniversary Byakia. And um, yeah, Ron Carcello was burned on everything, man. No Berserker though. So that's it. Recharge link, Ron Carcello. This Rukia, uh, I kind of have a hard time placing her in Oetsu because of course Oetsu is not going to clear faster than anyone up here. But overall, his prowess is insane he can pretty much clear so much content he's like a swiss army knife like he can just clear a lot of content autoing or manual infinite boost because he has recharge built in with his kit and on top of his boost so i mean flurry i mean you know i mean hey you know but so but i rank rookie at first because co-op is way more important you are not about to be running oetsu in co-op and if you are lord bless you okay so yeah rookie is gonna smack she basically has the best kit possible in the game essentially right without havoc 725 beam first 800 radius second in the full screen third with 20 percent berserker um, and Bruiser, it would be good if she had like weakened defense. If she had weakened defense, man, she would be up there. But overall, her place is perfect. She had the same kit as SS Biot without Havoc. We already covered Oetsu, pretty much said everything I can say about him. No poise though, crawling vortex, second strong attack, lunging first, which is very fast, covers a lot of ground, full screen third, so reaper killer, auto god, blade god, swag god, drip god, Oetsu. And then we're going to move on to this tier, Halibel, who honestly, man, yo, like the jury Loki out on her, bro, because at her first, it's melee collision, but it's slow and it's broken up into three waves. So you don't get full damage with this Halibel's first strong attack unless you literally line up every bit of it so that does lend her to have like one of the slowest types of lunges possible and she does have havoc 
um, and a barrier move for a second strong attack. So she doesn't, she's not gonna have the best cooldown. Her second is kind of saving her because she has a barrier and a boost. It's hindering her and saving her. You know, it boosts the party, boosts her nad, boosts her focus and um, keep people alive. So definitely she has that intangibility as well as a full screen 1200 radius third strong attack. That's gonna really kick ass. At the end of the day, a Ron Car Killer for tech is pretty stacked. And um, you know, if you have transcendence or dupes into whatever, you know, tech a Ron Car Killer, that's who I would suggest using. But uh, yeah, man, this has been the list. Make sure you guys weigh in, let me know how you feel. I know that the Yamamoto isn't out just yet. I've already analyzed them. I've already run the numbers. I've already run the data. I've already run the skills. So this is my personal opinion for right now. And um, yeah, I think this Yamamoto is absolutely broken. You know, I love what they did with this kit. He got a unique second strong attack. That's something that we've been wanting very badly. And um, yeah, man, the only thing they could have done was give him a better killer and uh, maybe one extra flash step or something. But overall, man, this character is amazing. And I do think that he slightly does edge out Ginzuru in most facets of the game. But yeah, man, make sure you guys win and make sure you let me know. Profit Nation to the next time. Love y'all. I'm out. On the sunny days, for myself I'll make a wish. All them people done got me.